depth or scene depth. Let's talk about it today with an example. Imagine that we have a red cube. In a broad sense, the GPU will color each pixels within the shape red to render the entire cube. Now imagine that we have a second cube in front of the first one. A green cube this time. So this one is rendered like this. So these pixels which the GPU already colored red will be overridden to green. Essentially, the GPU have worked twice to color these pixels. This is called overdraw, which is a very bad thing performance wise. So to save the GPU to do those calculations or prevent overdraw, we can render the green cube first and then render the red cube. But how will the GPU know that we need to draw the green cube first, then the red one? The answer to that is the depth buffer. Depth buffer is also known as Z buffer. Now the question is, what is this fancy term depth buffer or Z buffer? Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with Goku and Gang. Depth buffer is simply a memory space that GPU uses to determine how far an object is from the camera. The value stored in depth buffer is between 0 to 1, where typically 0 means the closest to the camera and 1 means farthest. Now this depth value is used by GPU to prevent the overdraw. Okay, that's all cool, but let's see how the GPU uses the depth value to render the stuff. Let's take our previous example of two quads. The GPU already rendered the green quad and we are in the middle of drawing the red one. Now at this moment, our depth values will look like this. Now the GPU will compare these values to determine whether to draw the pixel or not. And the comparison is known as a depth test. The pixel will be rendered if the depth test will pass. Now there are a couple of depth test conditions and I will get there in a minute, but the default one is less than. The GPU will compare the depth value of the current fragment with the value stored in depth buffer. So for this pixel, depth value stored in the depth buffer is 1, depth value for our quartz fragment is let's say 0.5. And the comparison will go, is 0.5 is less than 1? Yes, so the depth test passes and our pixel will be rendered and our fragment's depth will be written to the depth buffer. Similarly, for this pixel, depth value stored in the depth buffer is let's say 0.2. So the comparison will go, is 0.5 is less than 0.2? No, the depth test will fail and the pixel will be discarded. Now all of this is handled by our GPU. We don't need to do anything to make it happen. For this reason, depth buffer cannot be directly accessed by the shaders. Instead, the depth value is stored in our camera's depth texture. Imagine that we have our scene here, so the depth texture will look something like this. And only opaque objects will write to the depth texture by default. Transparent objects won't. And these depth values are stored in normalized device coordinates, sometimes also referred to by the name clip space, because any object outside of the coordinate range will simply be clipped. Normalized device coordinates, or NDC for short, will go from minus 1 to 1 in x-axis, left to right of the screen. Similarly, it will go from minus 1 to 1 in y-axis, bottom to top of our screen. For z-axis or depth, they are a bit different. In OpenGL graphics backend, means when you are using mobile or compatibility renderer, z-axis will go from minus 1 to 1 from our camera's near clip plane to far clip plane. But in Vulkan graphics API, meaning if you are using forward plus renderer, z-axis will go from 0 to 1 from our camera's near clip plane to far clip plane. However, in any case, values stored in depth texture will always be between 0 to 1. So we need to adjust them depending on the renderer we are using. And the z-values are not linear like this, rather they increase exponentially like this. The reason is, objects near the camera should be rendered with more details than the objects that are further away, so the depth will be stored in higher bits for the objects that are closer to the camera. Now a heads up first, everything that I've said is true for Godot 4.0 to 4.2. However, in Godot 4.3, the depth texture will be stored inversely. Meaning the closer objects will have depth value near 1 and far away objects will have depth value near 0. And the clip space Z axis will also be reversed like this. So if you're doing anything with the depth in clip space, the code will be different for Godot version 4.2 and lower and 4.3 and above. Now let's see how we can access depth values from the depth texture. So for the example, let's visualize depth values onto this green quad. 
Ok, I've gone ahead and applied a shader material onto the quad which uses this shader. Now the first thing is, I need a depth texture so I will go Uniform Sampler 2D Depth Texture By the way, you can give any name here, it's just a variable. Ok, by doing this, I will simply have a texture slot in the inspector. I have to tell Godot that I need to access depth buffer or need reference to depth texture. I can do that by setting hint, hint depth texture. Then in the fragment processor, let's sample the texture with screen UV, float depth equals texture, then the texture to sample is depth texture with screen UV. And the depth texture is just a grayscale texture, so I can use any channel here. Now let's visualize the depth, so albedo equals rec3 of depth. This can very quickly go from 0 to 1, so let's use power function so we can see it properly. Power of depth, raised to 15. Now I can see the depth. It will be near 0 if my camera is closer to the object and near one for faraway objects. Once more a quick heads up, in Godot 4.3 and above, the depth values will be inverted. So it will look something like this. Ok that's all cool, but the depth value is not really useful on its own. Now let's say we have our quad here and other objects here. In my quad shader, I want this distance. To find that, I can use depth value. So as the depth, I will have this distance. Now if I can somehow figure out this distance, I can subtract it from this distance to get this distance. I have access to the vertex variable in fragment processor which will give me the fragment position. And the cool thing is, it is in view space. In view space or camera space, the origin 000 will be our camera's position. X and Y axis will point to the X and Y axis of the camera. And in Godot, camera's forward is negative, so for example, if I have this quad's position as 0, minus 1 and minus 5 in view space, that simply means that this quad is 1 meter below our camera's Y position and 5 meters in front. So this distance is simply vertex.z. But there is one final catch here. This distance is in view space and this distance is in clip space. Before I can apply subtraction, I need to either convert this distance to clip space or this distance to view space. Either of them will work but I will convert depth to view space. So the subtraction will happen in view space and the code will work on any Godot 4.x versions. Ok now in the shader, I need to convert this depth from clip space to view space. So first I will create a clip space vector. Back 4 ndc equals vec4 of screen uv multiply to minus 1 because x and y goes from minus 1 to 1 in clip space. Then depth and 1 sw component. Now here this depth is 0 to 1 which is the actual depth range for Vulkan so it is all cool. For mobile or compatibility renderer, you need to convert the value to go from minus 1 to 1 like this. Then to get a view vector, I can use inverse projection matrix. Vec4 view equals inverse projection matrix multiply ndc. Now our depth was non-linear in clip space, so I need to make it linear. View.z divide equals view.w. And the linear depth will be float linear depth equals view.z. However, this will be negative because our camera's forward axis is negative. But we can't visualize negative values so I need to negate it so minus view.z. Ok, now I have this distance. Let's subtract this distance from it. Minus vertex.z. However, the vertex.z is also negative so I need to negate this as well. Or I can simply go plus vertex.z. Now this linear depth is in view space, it basically now indicates depth in meters so it can go beyond 0 to 1 range. So let's clamp it and now let's say I want the distance 3 meters beyond this quad mesh. So simply divide 3 here and let's just visualize it. And now I have the depth relative to my quad. 
so it will be same regardless of my camera's distance. Pretty cool. Now, have you noticed that I'm only using my view vector Z and W components to calculate the depth? So I can slightly optimize this by omitting this matrix multiplication with vector 4. So this is the simplified version of how inverse projection matrix looks like. You don't have to worry about what values it actually holds, but still if you're curious, here is the nice legend. I will just replace these values with variables. The index refers to the columns followed by the column components. I've done this because matrices in Godot are in column major order. Anyway, then I was multiplying my clip vector with the matrix. And if you want to know how this multiplication works in more details, check out my matrix video. Basically, it goes like for x component, this into this, plus this into this, plus this into this, plus this into this. And the result will look something like this. Now I only need z and w components. Basically this, divide by this. So I can derive this nice formula to directly calculate the linear depth. By doing this, I can save some performance on 8 multiplications and 6 addition operations for x and y components. But do you remember that I have negated the view.z? I have to do that here as well, so the final formula will look something like this. In my other tutorials, I have used this formula instead, because I saw others using it, but you can use either of them. They are basically the same. For today, I will use the top one. So instead of all of this, simply go 1 divide by depth multiply inverse projection matrix third columns w component plus inverse projection matrix fourth columns w component. Then I need to subtract the distance to our fragment, so simply plus vertex.z. Now do you remember that I've said that there are other depth test functions? Those functions are like this. Unfortunately at the time of recording this video, we cannot override the default depth test function in our custom shaders. There are proposals open for that, so we have to wait. But I can still play around the default less than depth test function by overriding the depth buffer values for my fragments. Let's say I want to render this red quad only where there is no geometry and occlude it with every other geometry. Ok for that I've gone ahead and applied the material that uses this shader. Let's just sample the depth texture real quick. Then I will manually write the value in the depth buffer. Depth equals 1. So now the quad will be rendered behind every mesh even though it is in front of some meshes. Now you might be wondering about why I sample the depth texture if I'm not using it. Well, if you override the depth directly, it won't work. And frankly, I don't know the reason myself. So if you know why, do let me know in the comments. Ok now let's say I only want to render the quad if it is actually behind other meshes. For that, first I need to calculate the fragment depth of my quad. I can do that by converting my vertex position in clip space using projection matrix. Vec for ndc equals projection matrix multiply vec four of vertex and one. Then in the clip space, depth should be non-linear, so I will go float fragment depth equals ndc.z divided by ndc.w. Now here I'm only using z and w components, so just like before. This is the simplified version of projection matrix. I will just replace the values with the variables. Then I'm multiplying vertex position to get the clip space vector. The result will look like this. So I can simply use this divided by this. The formula will look like this. So instead of this, projection matrix third columns z component multiply vertex.z plus projection matrix fourth columns z component then divide by minus vertex.z now this depth can be between 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 depending on your renderer so if you're using mobile or compatibility renderer you need to remap this value to go from 0 to 1 which is easy enough Fragment depth multiply equals 0.5 plus 0.5. But I don't have to do that because I'm using Vulkan. 
Now my fragments depth is not yet written to the depth buffer. So from this angle, I will get let's say 0.2 for this green quad as depth from the depth buffer. My fragments depth is 0.5 for example. Then I will go if fragment depth is less than depth. So this condition will be true where my geometry is not occluded. So I will simply discard that pixel. And for the rest of the pixels, I will simply write 0 in the depth buffer. So now I can only see my red quad through this green one. Pretty cool. And the possibilities are endless with this. Now here, everything is in clip space. And I am using Godot 4.2. So in Godot 4.3, you need to change the code. Just invert the condition and set 1 as depth. And it will work just fine. And that's the video. The only video you will ever need regarding scene depth. If you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. And a shout out to Infinite Log for encouraging me to make this video. I know there's a missing guy there, but don't know how else to pronounce it, so... But you're breathtaking. Now I can hear you say that that is all great, but what about the practical use case? Hmm... Well, guess what? I have these two videos showcasing the practical use of depth in the shaders. Check them out and I will see you there.